Welcome once again right now at 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 1 through 25. Prophecy superior to tongues. Paul says, follow after love and earnestly desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. I said in a former video that there are a lot of people out there that claim to have or claim to operate in the gift of prophecy or they claim to be prophets. And most of them, by far most of them, are not true prophets. They are false prophets. They prophesy from their own spirit. They don't prophesy from the spirit of the Lord. And I explained all that before in previous videos. That is not to say that I completely threw out the baby with the bathwater. Yes, there are some few and rare instances where people actually do prophesy true prophecies. And I'm not encouraging anybody to forbid that. However, what I am saying is that you should all be very, very careful. One good rule of thumb is this, and you see it throughout Scripture, throughout the whole entire scope of Scripture, all the way from Genesis to Revelation and beyond. That is that a true prophet would ultimately call people to repentance. If you've got someone who claims to be a prophet, claims to hear the voice of God, and you never hear them speaking about sin, never hear them speaking against sin, never hear them calling people to true repentance, well, that is a good sign that it is a false prophet. Prophecy is like any other spiritual gift. It is a gift. It is not something that someone can teach you to do or train you to do. It is something that God would give you sovereignly in his own time and by his own will. For he who speaks in another language speaks not to men but to God. For no one understands but in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks to men for the edification, exhortation, and consultation. He who speaks in another language edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the assembly. Now Paul is talking about people who pray here in other languages, in other tongues, so to speak. So if you pray in another language or another tongue, you are speaking to God. But don't forget, you know, it is possible to speak in English and still be speaking in the Spirit. Think with me here. You're in the upper room. It's Acts chapter 2, just shortly after Jesus rose from the dead and ascended. It's the day of Pentecost. You're there. And there are people there from all over the world. And it is probable that there was someone there from ancient England that would speak English, an ancient form of English. And when the Spirit of God came upon the disciples, when the Spirit of God came upon the apostles and they were speaking in other languages, the people from other parts of the world said, hey, they're speaking our language. They didn't even learn the languages that they're speaking. It is a miraculous sign of God. They are speaking in tongues. They are proclaiming the wonderful works of God in tongues. And it is possible that one of those apostles, one of those disciples was actually speaking English and they were speaking in the spirit. So you can speak in your own native tongue and still be speaking in the spirit. But here in this context, Paul is talking about someone who is speaking in other languages to God, okay? Don't forget, it is possible to prophesy in another language as well, in so-called tongues. It's possible to prophesy. Paul is not talking about tongues in that context here in this portion of Scripture. Verse 5, Now I desire to have you all speak with other languages, but rather that you would prophesy. For he is greater who prophesies than he who speaks with other languages, unless he interprets that the assembly may be built up. Here again, Paul puts a great emphasis on interpretation, on understanding what you are actually speaking. It is very important. Now, I've also witnessed this. Now, again, this is just a caution, a word of caution. I've also witnessed an interpreter, a so-called interpreter, that 
is really just interpreting from their own spirit as well. They're just making up an interpretation from their own spirit, from their own heart. It's not really from the spirit of God. And you got to be careful about that too. So every time someone speaks in another tongue, so to speak, or any time that someone interprets that, You've got to test that. You've got to really put that to the scripture. Put that really to the test to see if that is really what God is saying. Verse 6, But now, brothers, if I come to you speaking with other languages, what would I profit you? Unless I speak to you either by way of revelation or of knowledge or of prophesying or of teaching, even things without life giving a voice, whether pipe or harp, if they didn't give a distinction in the sounds, how would it be known what is piped or harped? For if the trumpet gave an uncertain sound, who would prepare himself for war? So also you, unless you utter by the tongue words easy to understand, how would it be known what is spoken? For you would be speaking into the air. And believe me, there's a lot of speaking into the air in a lot of Pentecostal churches today. There are, it may be, so many kinds of languages in the world, and none of them is without meaning. There is a key word here, meaning. If then I don't know the meaning of the language, I would be to him who speaks a foreigner, and he who speaks would be a foreigner to me. So also you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, seek that you may abound to the building up of the assembly. Now here Paul is talking about edification, building up, exhorting, encouraging people. This is the same kind of word that Jesus said to Peter when he said, upon this rock I will build my church. He's not talking about building a church as in brand new, as if it didn't exist before. We went through this before in our previous sessions, Acts chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, where it is proven that the church of Jesus Christ existed way back in the time of Moses. Yes, it's true. That's what the scriptures teach. The church of Jesus Christ, the called out ones, his people, the people of Jesus Christ existed back then. How, you may ask? Well, Jesus existed back then and he revealed himself back then and he spoke to people back then and people heard and people saw and people believed. It was ancient Christians. Check out Acts chapter 7 and 1 Corinthians chapter 10 for more details. Therefore let him who speaks in another language pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in another language, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing in the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Otherwise, if you bless with the Spirit, how will he who fills the place of the unlearned say Amen at your giving of thanks, seeing he doesn't know what you say? For you most certainly give thanks well, but the other person is not built up. I thank my God. I speak with other languages more than you all. However, in the assembly, I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I may instruct others also than 10,000 words in another language. Brothers, don't be children in thoughts. In other words, be mature in the way you think. Yet in malice, be babies. But in thoughts, be mature. In the law, it is written, by men of strange languages, and by the lips of strangers, I will speak to this people. They won't even hear me that way, says the Lord. And that's in Isaiah chapter 28, verses 11 and 12. Interesting that Paul calls Isaiah the law. Verse 22, Therefore other languages are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to the unbelieving. But prophesying is for a sign not for the unbelieving, but to those who believe. If therefore the whole assembly is assembled together and all speak with other languages and unlearned or unbelieving people come in, won't they say that you're crazy? But if all prophesy and someone believing or unlearned comes in, he is reproved 
or in other translations says convicted by all and he is judged by all. Thus the secrets of his heart, implying sins, are revealed. So he will fall down on his face and worship God, declaring that God is among you indeed. This is true prophecy. This is true prophecy. If you have a sinner come into your assembly, come into your church, and you prophesy, remember what I just said earlier? True prophets call people to repentance and call out sin. And I tell you, I saw so many false prophets out there. They will prophesy that you will have a new car, a new house, a new uh, job, or a, you know, a promotion in your job, you know, or that God loves you so much, or all this stuff and pampering and blessings and stuff. They will prophesy all this stuff. You know, I've heard it said by somebody before, and this was a a high profile preacher said, you know what? If you can't really hear God, just bless the people and just just prophesy blessing on them and, and that'll work. That'll cover up, you know, your lack of hearing the voice of God. Listen, let us not settle for this trash anymore. If someone gets up there and prophesies, if there's a preacher that goes in the pulpit, or if there's someone in the congregation and they're prophesying, and all they say all the time is just blessing and how much God loves you and how much God will bless you and how much money you're going to have, how much new job you're going to have, how much things you're going to get, all this kind of stuff. Oh yeah, and then everybody, you know, all your friends are going to be saved and all this revival's coming and all this crazy stuff. They always prophesy like this. If that's all they prophesy, and they don't talk about sin, and they don't call out sin, and they don't call people to repentance, that is a false prophet. This, this is New Testament Christianity. When a sinner comes into the church, a sinner comes into the assembly, and someone prophesies, and they call out the sin, they call out the secret sins in that person's life, and that person is awestruck, Whoa, there's no way you can know that stuff except God be with you. And they fall down on their face and they worship God. And they say, truly God is among you. That is true prophecy. That is true New Testament prophets and how they operate. Seek God with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.